Hey guys, Rixer here, and welcome back to the final FNAF movie trailer we will see before the actual film drops in theaters. In today's video, we're going to be going over everything that you might have missed in your initial watch, and not to mention 10 things that could actually change the way that this movie plays out forever, and maybe even reference to the second movie. So with all that being said, go ahead and grab a drink and a snack and let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that I wanted to point out is just how suspicious Vanessa is in this actual trailer. For one, when she's initially talking to Mike in the trailer, you'll notice that her badge actually doesn't even have a name on it. I pulled this exact image into Photoshop and zoomed in just as much as I possibly could, not to mention brighten this image, and you cannot see a name on her badge at all. Which, in my opinion, is pretty suspicious for a police officer to be walking around with a nameless badge. Not to mention, she's a little too familiar with the entire pizzeria and the cast of Freddy's. Even going as far as pressing the button for showtime next to the stage. But I will say, I feel like Vanessa goes through somewhat of a character shift throughout this movie. And I'll tell you why. For one, when we see her dressed as a police officer, she seems to be almost arrogant. And it's almost like she's being sarcastic or trying to mess with Mike's head when she's dressed as the police officer. And obviously we know from the last trailer that she ends up in the hospital, which makes me think Mike may or may not have done something to change the way that she approached this whole situation. And I actually believe that this can be further proven. You see, if you slow down the part in the video where she sees Spring Bonnie for the very first time, you'll notice she doesn't look afraid of him but almost as if she's trying to plead with him or get him to change his mind about something. And that is when she gets choked out. And Mike even asks her, tell me how to stop them. And she responds that you don't. And the worry on her face here really makes me think that she knows a little bit more than she's leading on when she initially meets him. So my theory, if it's not obvious already, is that William Afton and Vanessa have some type of relationship going into the movie. Which leads me to my next fact, and that is quite simply that the suit that we see at the end is not Springtrap, but actually Spring Bonnie. As you'll notice, it's really obvious. If you actually brighten up this image, the character is super yellow, not to mention the giant purple bow tie that it wears. However, one thing that I will give you is the fact that it does look like it's withering away a little bit on his right arm. And shoot, I'll even give you some of the face. If you look at the right eye and zoom in, you'll notice there's almost like a crack in the suit. Which is actually really cool because when you think about it, the spring trap suit is just a withered or decayed version of the spring bonnie suit. So kudos to Blumhouse for actually making these small details come to life in the movie trailer. So for the third thing that I actually wanted to point out, you need to go back to the guy who gets eaten alive by the cupcake. For starters, we finally get the first image of the iconic kitchen, and everybody knows you could not have FNAF 1 without a kitchen. And it's actually really cool because if you go to the cameras in Mike's office, there is no kitchen monitor very similar to the game. But of course, the one animatronic that would be found in this kitchen is none other than Chica. And she goes after the guy wearing the Midnight Motorist t-shirt. However, this isn't even the detail that I wanted to bring up. I actually wanted to point out that this guy's name in the movie is actually Carl. And who eats him alive? Well, you guessed it. It is actually the Bucktooth Cupcake, which a lot of people over the years have called this thing Carl. And I know it's not his official name, but I want to say that this was a cool detail put in the movie by Blumhouse. So again, kudos to them. So the next detail that I wanted to point out is actually when Vanessa is explaining to Mike who the animatronics are. If you go back to the security footage and as the video is playing it begins to glitch in and out. And initially I didn't really recognize anything wrong with this because the first glitch really doesn't show anything it just goes to like a black screen. But after slowing it down I almost felt like I was going crazy for missing this. You'll see here on the screen that it looks like Freddy is looking deep within the soul of whoever is watching this tape. Red eyes and all, this is really reminiscent to what we were seeing in the FNAF Security Breach little teaser videos. 
And it is pretty cool how it just happens to pop up on the screen right after Vanessa says back in the 80s. And speaking of Freddy, that brings me to my next point. Though the next detail that I actually wanted to point out is the fact that when you see this little boy run off inside of the pizzeria, you'll notice he runs off into what looks like a parts and service room. And obviously when I watched this for the first time, I couldn't take my eyes off how stunning Freddy looked here, but there's actually a pretty big detail that I missed. You see, I paused it and took a picture of this as well, brightened up the image, and you'll notice to the left of Freddy is an endo, which is actually really cool and a little detail that I feel they put in the game once again to match FNAF 1. Because everybody knows you can't have a parts and service room without an empty endoskeleton. And we all know what happens next as the little boy's hand comes reaching out from inside of the suit, grabbing the poor victim. But there's one more thing I want to actually point out about this little boy. For one, if you go back to when Mike is walking and looking around in the forest, he sees five children. And obviously, we've already come to the conclusion that these are the five children that are inside of these animatronics. I mean, they're perfectly lined up, right? You got Bonnie, Freddy, Foxy, Chica and what we thought was Golden Freddy. But notice the little boy with the white hat is actually the same one who runs off from the girl and gets inside of the Freddy suit. So are we getting misled here in the trailer? Or is our theory just a little bit off? Regardless, it's a cool little detail that I think we should probably take note of. And it leads me to my next point, as we finally get to see a really cool image of Foxy. Mouth open and all, he looks absolutely terrifying. But there's one thing that I actually noticed for the very first time watching this video, and it's the fact that little Abby is hiding behind this arcade machine, and it is very, very similar to what we see in the FNAF books, The Silver Eyes. As this graphic novel actually has a scene really similar to this, where Charlotte is running away from Foxy, ducking and dodging in between arcade machines until he eventually swings at her with his hook. Now, the next thing that I wanted to point out is probably pretty obvious to a lot of you, and I mentioned it in my initial reaction. But in case you missed it, I do want to go over the fact that when we do see this guy about to get spring locked, or to be honest, this looks a lot worse. The man who is tied down in the chair is not actually Mike in this scene. However, he's definitely wearing a night guard security uniform and it probably was the night guard before Mike. And I'd imagine it's the whole reason why they're looking for a new night guard to begin with. Now, remember at the beginning of the video when I said that we might actually have a glimpse of FNAF 2, the movie? One thing I wanted to point out is the fact that when you see this robber running for his life through these underground tunnels, these tunnels look very familiar to me, and if I'm being 100% honest, they really remind me of FNAF sister location. And what better timing would it be for the FNAF movie coming out in October to end with a sneak peek at the sister location than for them to drop Help Wanted in December? But hey, maybe that theory is just a little too out there and I have Help Wanted 2 on my mind seeing as PAX is going on right now. But hey, I just want to thank everybody who's made it this far in the video, and if you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button, and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well, I promise you won't regret it. And if you want to point out anything that I missed that you might have noticed in this FNAF trailer, please, by all means, comment it down below, and I'll make sure to get back to you in the comment section. But guys, that wraps up this video for now, thank you again for all the love and support, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace out!